Welcome back to The Edge, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's a good week, man. We live. Welcome back to The Edge, live in your Bleacher Report. I am your host, Micah Parsons. This episode is sponsored by Nationwide for your insurance and financial needs. Nationwide is on your side. Let's get right into it. You already know I'm bringing back my brother. You know, there is no 11 without the 7. 7-Eleven duos back on the pod it's time to bring him back onto the app. I think he's the best lockdown corner. He travels everywhere. He does what he do best. We're bringing back Trayvon Diggs. Welcome in, Trayvon. Yo, yo, what was that rain delay first? Like, what was the emotions in the locker room, bro? I wish I was there. They wouldn't let me travel, bro. Um, what was that like? What was the emotions in the locker room like? I don't know. That's never happened to me before. It was weird. We was just all sitting in the locker room just waiting, not knowing when we was going to go. Everybody was just taking their stuff off, picking their feet up. Did it mess so, up the field? Like, was the energy higher, nah, lower? Nah, we was pumped out to go. We was ready to go. Then we came back in. And then, like, everything died down. But we were still, like, in game mode, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't, it didn't affect us. Like, it didn't affect us at all. And then he was like, all right, we're going out in six minutes. Everybody put their stuff on and get ready. So... Everybody started putting stuff on, getting ready. Went out there for a little warm up, and then we were ready to play. Is this the first game you played to one a.m.? Yeah, that was crazy work right there. What time did I get I back from so the charter? Five a.m. I got to my house at like five fifty five a.m. Five fifteen. That's crazy. I, yo, people don't realize that football, like they basketball players, they get to stay the night, or sometimes they, if they close by, they, they go, uh, they'll yeah. travel that night. Like if they in Dallas and play Houston the next day, they'll drive down that night. But people don't realize football players, we hop on a flight right after the game, like right from the right, right after the game, injuries and all. <laughs> <laughs> like people don't realize that, bro. Like it'd be tough on them flights, especially when you're not in first class. We call it the trenches. Yeah, do you even that back in the trenches? So, yo, people don't realize like when you first get into the league and you playing a lot and you back in them trenches because a lot of people might seem like uh, we like basketball players, but we get charter flights. I need the people to realize yeah. that like football is like I'm gonna tell y'all, coaches and uh, you know certain staff higher ups, damn first class. You might have like ten football members in first and everyone else is in the back of the plane and i'm not talking about we're not talking about the economy plus because that's all media strength coaches yeah. we're talking about the seat don't yeah. recline the yeah the way back back of the plane where were you smelling gas they gotta, oil? They gotta fix that <laughs> yeah they gotta fix that that's crazy work all players especially if you plan you are like you plan like you on a 53 and you plan, you definitely should have a seat that comfortable where you can recline space. We out there working hard. We definitely deserve to be in the front. And they don't repeat this. Mind you, we're in the back of the plane and it's not like we got the road to ourselves. Sometimes you two to one, like yeah. two, like it could yeah, be two, two of one. us. Like we all 270, yeah. we sharing the middle seat and stuff. Like people don't realize that, bro. Like yeah. we got a rough. Yeah. Besides that, man, what was your takeaway? What was your takeaway from the game? You know, obviously me watching it, it was some things that I was like, bro, you know, I just felt like we were shooting each other in the foot sometimes. Like, damn, like. Um, you would have ate. I know. It, it, it was one of them games. It was one of them games. <laughs> <laughs> you would have ate. <laughs> Hey, bro, I'm still trying to shake back, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm trying to get right. Daily yeah. daily lab work. Daily lab work. What would you think of Pickens, bro? I saw I saw him getting into it with Jay Lou at the end of the game, but I, there's obviously a lot of frustration there, you know. <laughs> where that stem from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know how Jay Lou is, man. <laughs> nah, that was crazy. They was going at it all game. I was like, I, they going at. I'm like, this my man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, I was, I was crying because I watched that on like the regular beat. I said, yo, this man Pickens is sick. Like, because you know they're going to hit, yeah. the, hit him with that fine. 
That fire really be the worst part. Oh my like I probably I think there would be so yeah. many more fights if we wasn't scared of them fines. Like them fines is deep too. Man, I got fi- I got fine for throwing the ball into the stands. They said it was a safety hazard. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, you gotta talk about the fines. The fines with our socks, for our socks, ten thousand, eight thousand dollars for not wearing the right socks. Not even the right socks, just the team color socks. Like has to be a certain way. Like that's crazy to me. Like I should be able to wear what I want on my legs. Like I mean, the thing that we want to know is like, where do the money go, and how can we don't get donations to our charities? Like if I get fined, I should be that should go back to me, like <laughs> to my charity <laughs> where I wanted to go to or a charity of my choice. Like why y'all get to keep it? <laughs> Facts, like where's that money going? Like think of how many fines. Like it's definitely, I say, I say at least five people get fined every week, and it's definitely over a th- hundred thousand. It's a year. How many fines do you think it's a year total? I think they definitely accumulate in at least two, three million in fines. That's it. It that might crazy. be more. We gotta research it. it got, it's way more. Think about it. Think about how many people don't wear the right socks or don't wear knee pads and thigh pads, like all the little stuff. Those fines be like five thousand, ten thousand. First offender, second offender. There's some people that just don't care and wear different cleats. That fine is crazy work right there too. Yeah, I don't I don't get that swag. Like you know me. I'm all about Penn State, baby. Basic blues, black shoes. I ain't looking. Mannequin. Yeah, I ain't looking for nothing more than nothing less. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even need the name on the back of my jersey. I don't need none of that. I just want the basic blues, black shoes. Keep it very Bama was simple. I mean, y'all took that nasty loss. I mean Oh my God. I was hot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, and I yell, humbled the hell out of college football. We hate it, but we love it. Yeah. It's like any given Saturday. Like any given Sunday, any given Saturday. I mean, bro, I just feel like besides the, there's so many people transferring, there's so many good players that's going, like, you can't say, oh, I'm going to Bama because I know we're going to win a national championship. Like, I mean, y'all still that yeah. caliber of team, but you can't say, like, yeah. there's hella teams that's good as hell now. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of teams that's good. A lot of players got good players. Some Ohio State boys nice too. The wide receivers, they cold. I mean, why can't people think they want to natty if they beat Bama? Don't aren't y'all national champions, contenders? So what that mean? What you want brownie points for that? I mean, isn't it the same team what, what when teams do? come and beat America's team? Isn't that the same thing? Like it's just a big yeah, game like, because you that? earned it. What is that, though? But what is that, though? Nothing. It is something. Or you beat us and you lose the rest of your game. What what is that? It it means that for a second we stole your chain. So so if I come up to you on the street and snatch your chain (laughs) and and your people come get me later, what that mean? (laughs) I'm going to get my chain and I'm going to go get another chain. (laughs) No, it means for that for that for that week, I done snatched your chain and you're gonna be sick about it. You're gonna be sick. Yeah, I took your pride. That's your pride. <laughs> My man twerked the battle yeah, rapper, like we took his pride, we shook his pride. That's what we talk about. Like, that's your pride. Like you got like you gotta stand on that, bro. It is what it is. Yeah, you do. You definitely gotta stand on it for it. Definitely gotta stand on that lot. They definitely did beat us. I was sick. I'm like, oh my God, y'all have to ban their belt. Listen, one thing I'm tired of too is like people blow up, you know, arguments or talk on the sidelines. Like they try to blow up Dak and CDs, conversation on the sideline. Yeah. Please tell people, bro, like when we be getting like on the sideline, most 90%, 95% of this time, it's not even argument. It's just expression of what we're seeing out there, yeah. vocalizing. Um, you know, basically just showing what's out there, what's available. Everything is nonstop communication. Like, we're never really yeah. angry or frustrated with each other. Yeah, like, we we never going to, like, get to argue with, a, with somebody on the side. And, like, this is either you're going to – I tell you something that I see that you're doing wrong or maybe one play, I give up a pass. You'd be like, come on, bro. Like, we need that back. Or come on, bro. You need to, you know, strap. Like, strap up. 
that's yeah. not argument. That's that's constructive criticism. Like that's not, you know, arguing. I'd rather it come from you than it come from a random fan that don't know nothing about nothing and just right. saying anything trolling. They don't know, you know what, what I'm saying. So they don't you know. know what defense we in, <laughs> what checks we making on the field, nothing. Yeah, they don't know nothing. So I just feel like people just need to stay out, stay out of business. Like y'all be worried about the wrong stuff too much. Like mm-hmm. we got this. My business, move around. Man, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I remember the last time you was on here, you kept talking about the SEC better than the Big Ten. I mean, at this point, yeah, I feel like y'all not even valid, verified or you know validated statement no more. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, three out of the top five teams. Well, three out of you know, yeah. Three out of the top five teams is all Big Ten. It's fair. I feel like it's fair game, but when it comes down to it, when it's time, that SEC ball is just different, bro. Sorry. I mean, what what make y'all so different? Like, it may not be as different now because of the NIL stuff. Like, you get players from anywhere, but standard SEC ball was standard. From from years, that's been the standard. I'm a, next when, you, time, when we were playing, when we were playing, Big Ten is nothing. Like y'all slow, y'all run the ball, y'all don't, y'all don't do nothing spectacular. Like y'all just out there, run the ball, but slow people. Saquon was looking like you think. Ah, uh, I ain't gonna use Saquon. Saquon was tough. Saquon definitely would have did what he did at Penn State, at Alabama or in Florida or anywhere else. So I ain't gonna use that. Cause, but. The others around the linemen, the linebackers, and slow. Slow as dirt. Bro, bro, you realize I come from the Big Ten, and and I'm faster than you. (laughs) (laughs) That's one. (laughs) That's one. That's one. That's one person out of you. You one of a million, bro. Hey, bro. I need you to realize this because first of all, bro, I'm gonna actually do some real research because I don't want to talk. On something that I'm, I can't verify, but I'm pretty yeah. sure the Big Ten has more success at linebackers than any other conference, especially Penn State, where LBU. So I just feel like those aren't verified statements. Like you just don't. Okay, I can do that. Like don't get on the pod. But are y'all are are y'all on big? Are y'all big and fast? I mean, are y'all big and slow? Like the line would be big no. and slow. Like, Think about Ryan Shazier. Ryan Shazier came from Ohio State. And before his injury, he was bro, literally the S- best linebacker in the NFL. Bro, in the SEC, you just, the gameplay was just different. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about what we play. Like when you see us flying around, 11 has to the ball, it looks like a whole new, whole different element. Like look at Alabama back in the days, bro. Look like a whole new element, whole different. Like this look crazy. I just want to know who came from the SEC at linebacker. That's like, just wow. That's like dominating the, the greatest, league right now. The greatest linebacker. Okay, not dominating the league right now, but the greatest linebacker to ever play college football went to Alabama. Who? Ruben Foster. You're saying he's the greatest linebacker ever in college football? Ever, yes. I don't know if I could say ever. 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 I'm standing on that. I don't know if Who we you could... Who you say? Linebacker. College. We just talking about college. I'm going with LeVar Arrington from Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bro... <laughs> I like the LeVar Leap. I mean, bro was a two time All American. Like when things was like the, when the All American stuff was going on, he went back to back. He was the number two overall pick in a draft. I mean, like linebacker. Like I like I. You can't put too many linebackers over him in the history of college football. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. Like I don't know if Ruben's yeah. making that feat. Like. Ruben's tough. Nah, he was, I mean, he was electric when he was out there. Hey, bro, it seems like 
but you know, sidetrack. It seems like you're speaking of Bama though. Your record is in trouble, bro, by another Bama boy. I know. You seen him? He's snapping. Yeah, Xavier McKinney, five interceptions in the first five games with the Packers. I mean, Looking sweet. There are four players who had six straight games with interception. You one of them. I mean, yeah. You had seven in six games. That's what it's, look, look at. Look at it. Look at what that tell you right there. SEC ball. Pat just had two two picks last game. X is is going on a crazy run right now. I mean, bro. Th- I mean, these are all you know second contract generational players. What about all the other ones that y'all y'all that didn't go? That way. My my whole team was far that year. That whole my whole eleven offense and defense far. And then y'all lose. When? What you mean when? In the championship. Yeah. It happens. You win something, you lose something. It can't be that far. <laughs> we may have got we may have got our out coach that day like. Ah, oh, so you yeah. said, so y'all got out coach. <laughs> yeah, that shit happens. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember one game. No, I remember one game. We definitely, like, they had our number. When we played uh, LSU. Oh. We played LSU. They, they had Joe Burrow. They had um, Justin and Jamar. Oh, my gosh. They were drawing that stuff up. We couldn't stop a cold, <laughs> but they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop us either. We was it was. A but they was won crazy. though. The funnest game I've ever been a part of. Yeah, they won. I mean, bro, honestly, that that 2019 LSU team is the best team ever assembled, and I think in the history of college. I mean, even if you put that same team on a NFL, made an NFL team with that roster. They would still be at a yeah. high level, damn near. Wasn't on um, the linebacker there? Um, Playvon Chasing? Yeah. Where did Patrick Queen go? Pat Queen, I think he was at. He might have been at LSU. Yeah, he was at LSU. I mean, yo, really think about it. I think they might have had Jamar, first round pick, Jets, Joe Burrow, uh, Pat Queen. Devin White. Was Stingley on that team then? I think he might have been a freshman. Yeah, Stingley was on that team. Stingley too. was a first round yeah, pick. Yeah, Patrick Crane was on that team too. They had a yeah. mob. Grant Delpit was on they that team. Um, yes. They, bro, I think they might have had at least 12 to 13 first round draft picks. Yeah, they had a. They and then, and the re- I think, I think it, it was a out of their start, and I think 19 players got drafted. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, they had a mob. Yeah, I don't know how they put that together. You think you think <laughs> X is on a defensive player? Do you think a deep I always talk about this. You think a a defense like a DB, but since Gilly, no one's have won defensive player year as a safety, a corner. I mean, you even had 11 yeah. interceptions in a year and didn't win. I mean, do you think it's right. possible and it bland broke the pick six record and didn't even come close in the polls? Yeah, that that got it. Yeah, that gotta that gotta change, bro. That's not right. Like, these are historic moments in history. Like in history of football, these are historic moments. They we doing historic things. Like, how are you not? But how, how did Bland win defensive player of the year? Like, no one has ever done that. Like, that is history. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's just crazy. I just feel like it's biased towards like y'all. You know, like they don't give us a chance. Like even the year that Gilly had won it. Gilly, I feel like Gilly only won it that year because who was it got hurt or something? Someone that year got hurt, like a lineman that got hurt. Like I bet if the lineman was still, I mean, he would have won. Like, like, do you think a DB disrupt the game more, or a rusher, or tackle? Because what do you weigh in more, like sacks, pressure? uh, Disruption or turnovers? I mean, because I feel like y'all can only go as we go. Yeah, I feel like it go hand in hand with each other. Like if you ain't if you're not out there getting them sacks, I'm not out there probably making plays on the ball. You get what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. at the same time, there's players that's like 
on teams with with rushes like and their corners and defensive backs don't be getting no ball. They don't be getting no interceptions or yeah. nothing like that. So it's like they be batting the ball down. Like how you got somebody doing all this rushing and you don't got no picks. Hundred percent. When I got that good, when I had got that good rusher, it was on and popping. <laughs> 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 yeah, I man, when we came in, we were striking. Yeah, <laughs> no remorse for nobody. <laughs> I mean, Jaden. I mean, let's you know, let's move on. I mean, Jaden Daniels, he ran on his run at LSU, but I mean, the Commanders are now four and one. They got their best start. He's the first player in NFL history to have a thousand over a thousand passing yards, two hundred fifty rushing yards in his first five career games. You think he can have a chance yeah. at winning MVP? Definitely, he's tough. Tough. Dude, we gonna have we gonna have some we gonna have some problems with them. Nah, for sure. We definitely gonna have to find a way to contain them. <laughs> but we got some young players too yeah. that's hooping right now. Demo, Maris, they running, running. Yeah, fact. They hooping. Yeah, I they mean, running. They look good. I think he's if he continues the pace and run he he's on, you know. Um, he definitely has a great chance. The fact that he was able to do what he did against that Cleveland defense is extremely impressive. Yeah. That's great coaching. I mean, yeah. all the way around catching, um, you know, did it against the Giants. I mean, it, I would say, a, you know, a do-it-all moment, moment for me would be if he went out there and dominated against the Baltimore Ravens next week and they play them, you know, this week. Yeah. I mean – that would be huge. I for sure think it's gonna get done. Like I think he can do it because he just he got that swag to him. Like he got that confidence. Like I know I'm I know I'm like that, you know? And mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, that come a lot from Q too. Like, you know how Q had us. Q had us with our confidence like through the roof. Like mm-hmm. he's gonna have you ready to play. You're gonna yeah. be ready to play. You're gonna be ready to crash through a wall playing mm-hmm. for him. So I feel like him with his talent and his ability and like he got that behind him and that support. Like Sky's a limit for him. You know, I think first, you know, Dan, you know, Dan Quinn is like a father figure to me. And I, you know, I love that guy to death. But I think, you know, that goes past a lot, man. Dan builds a great culture, man. Uh, not even just from from a foundation standpoint of just fight, grit, determination, all that. It's really no surprise for me that he's been able to change this commander's team and environment around this fast. I mean, from I think they might have won four games total last year, maybe a little bit more to starting off four and one. I mean, that's I mean, you know how we felt about Dan. Dan was always that guy. So, you know, the way he's building his team around his offseason ads, I mean, it, it's crucial and vital, but I'm I'm man, this is they you know, they up there. You know they up there. I mean, right now it's still early. Everyone's still finding identity. We're dealing with injuries, Eagles injuries. Yeah. But right now they're playing like the best yeah. team in the NFC. They 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 play like it. Yeah. Um, you know, they got the best record, so they're in the lead. Um, they're off to a hot start. But you know, we all you know, it's, you know how it goes. It's a long season, right? We thought the Eagles were winning the division right. last year and they, you know, fluked out yeah. four or five of the last six games yeah. and we ended up winning it. So, you know, it's all about yeah. runs and they on the run right now. So, you know, it's still very early to decide who, you know. Yeah, so it's still very early, but you know, always my brother, I appreciate you for coming on. Um, you know, thank you for everything. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of you, bro. You say it's the game. Of course, man. Thank you. Thank, say thank you to Trayvon for coming on to the show. And y'all see Trayvon again, uh, throughout the year. I think he's putting on an all pro year so far. Um, another absolute great game. So, you know, he's definitely turned that page. Let's get into it. Now it's time for the hot tea of the week, man. Bengals, one and four after the OT loss to the Ravens. First of all, Lamar is playing at an MVP level. Um, You know, I don't take that away from them. But this is where I want people to understand how, you know, are we surprised the Bengals are struggling? People are going to say yes because, yes, they have Joe Burrow who played a great game. He was 30 for 39, 30 for 39, 392 yards, five touchdowns and one interception, and he's been playing great, right? But 
as I've always told this cast, right, it's a, it's important for management to do a great job building around your superstars. And yes, um, Joe Burrow put up, you know, five touchdowns and you can have a lot of points, right? But at the end of the point, defense always wins championships, right? And throughout the process, when you pay these players and you pay these people to come in and say, hey, this is what we've been needing the most and this is what we're missing. Well, over the last two years, the Bengals have lost a lot of foundational pieces. Yes, it's great to have superstars like Miles Garrett, uh, TJ Watt, um, Dak Prescott. You got all these foundational players that are great for the lineup. And, you know, it's always good. We're like, make sure we sign these players. Make sure we sign these players and bring this person in, uh, bring that person in. But sometimes you miss those, mm, those people in the middle, like, you know, those people that may not get the light that they deserve, but always play at a really good level. Um, great found, I call them foundational assets, right? They aren't going to make every play like your superstar can, but they will make the plays that need to be made and always going to be in the right spot because they dedicate and put everything into their craft. So they might not always have the best talent, but, you know, uh, IQ, intellectually, uh, football plays, always at the highest level. And these are just some simple players that, uh, you know they lost. DJ Reader has done a lot of great damage for them. A lot of great damage. Uh, they are now missing Joe Mixon, who's always been very dominant for the Bengals. Uh, definitely hurts them in the run game a little bit. Uh, they miss Chidobia Wuzie, uh, who else is a baller. Um, they just lost Daxon Hill uh, with his ACL. Uh, Nick Scott, Tyler Boyd. They also lost Jesse Bates, who's in... Uh, Atlanta, who's playing at a defensive player of the year level, like same as Xavier McKinney. I think Jesse Bates is up there when you talk about who's the best safety in the league, and he's playing with range now, and he wasn't capped. I mean, you you look at all these people, uh, and then you say, oh, we were having OT troubles, so you got Trent Brown, but then he got hurt, right? Um, you know, you bring in Sheldon Richardson, uh, but he got hurt, which is also a great ad. So you 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 say, oh, we need these pieces, and you you kind of lose people, right? When you start hitting that QB contract, then you're like, oh, we got to prepare because we got T. Higgins, um, and then you also say we got to prepare because we got to get ready to pay, you know, Jamar Chase, whatever, thirty six, thirty seven million dollars a year. You know, that's just the reality. When you pay these players, you got to hit on the draft picks, right? And you got to, you know, the the injuries are struggles. Like when you you know, uh, you know, uh, we got. You know, we kind of got lucky, right? Um, you know, Deron Bland, he pushed the work in. He got better and better. And, you know, when Trayvon uh, had got injured, he was able to capitalize on those opportunities, and he just got better and better. He ended up being an all-pro corner for us. But, you know, you kind of say, man, what happens if Deron Bland doesn't turn out that way? And you kind of say that the same way for, you know, uh, this Bengals team who's struggling, what they say is defensively is, you know, some of those draft picks that you drafted, like you expect them – to play better, you play them to play higher, and kind of when they don't hit, it's kind of like you're in this box of what can you do, right? So, you know, I wouldn't so much as, you know, people always try to say, um, you know, it's the quarterback, right? Um, we're not in a rebuild, and I know so much of it is coming down for the quarterback, but as I always say, defense will always win the championship because, yes, we may be struggling, and you kind of saw in that Steelers game yesterday with the Cowboys, our defense was able to step up tremendously. I mean, of course, our offense won that run at the end of the game to seal the game, and, you know, uh, Dak did what he does best, but, you know, that defense played a great game to contain the run, contain Justin, which was a fantastic job. But it, I would say the same thing right now for, you know, the Bills, you know. Um, you know, they had a lot of people on the contract. You know, they kind of wanted to run with the Poyer. And they was in that, you know, they was in that, uh, you know, that league of, oh, we got a lot of really good players. And we can afford them because, you know, that QB number didn't hit yet. You know, they had uh, Diggs. They had Gabe Davis. Now you're saying, oh, we lost Gabe Davis. Uh, we lost Stephon Diggs. Where do we go in this direction, right? And then they lost a lot, you know, defensively. You know, Matt, I would say he's another player that, you know, he was kind of like the guy that I was talking about was, you know, he was around a bunch of great guys on that defense, but he just got so much better that he ended up becoming an all-pro linebacker. Of course, he got hit with injuries again, but that's a guy who's a great, great, great linebacker that they hit on. So you just kind of always kind of got to get lucky with these pieces. And, you know, same same thing with Josh Allen, man. He went nine for 30. Um, you know, it, it's a different level when you got these high-caliber players, man, that kind of 
find ways to get open. You know, you could, you know, a team got to tilt away. So now you got, you know, receivers out there. Yes, they're young, but they're still learning the game. I think this is just an all apart learning game. Um, you know, you can't, you don't like, you know, when Stefan Diggs is out there, you got to still, you know, tilt the defense, tilt the coverage to him. Same thing with CD. When you got these high caliber players, they require a lot more tensions, which allows a lot of more players to be better, to eat more. And that's kind of why you need those all star players. But I just call this, you know, struggling, man. You know, between draft, uh, injuries, things like this, man. Sometimes it's coaching, but sometimes, you know, we just got to hit. You, you need players to play better, man. Um, and, and and that's just the reality of it. You know, sometimes people always talk about the cap. Yeah, the cap is not necessarily real. But, I mean, you can't have five superstars on your team. And, and that's just the reality of it, man. And, and it goes to show, man, like a team can only be good but for so long. But for so long, like you got to hit draft-wise. The Chiefs, why were they let, able to let, you know, Jerry Snee walk? Because they hit on Trent McDuffie. McDuffie is a, t you know, you put him in that conversation of top five, top ten corner in the NFL. I mean, he was an all pro last year. So, I mean, obviously he's in that top five category of people who play like abilities and things like that. And you talk about their linebacker. They hit with Bolton. You know, he's in my draft class. Bolton is ex extremely good. Um, you know, Carl Laftis, the DN, they hit with him to go with, you know, Chris Jones. I mean, so... When you talk about, oh, we might have to go get someone, and when you hit on it in the draft and it pans out to be very good, it's always a great sighting. So, you know, you always kind of be excited for those type of things. Um, so it, those are just prime examples about, like, how the cat works, when you hit on players and why some teams don't go through that struggle phase, right? The Chiefs have been dominant for a while, but they kind of hit, right? You And then you kind of see that Rashi Rice situation where, you know, he was – looking up to par. He was looking like a true number number one receiver and then the injuries hit, right? And uh we don't know what they're gonna look like now, but you know, when you let when they let go of Tyreek, you know, they kinda brung some pieces in and drafted some and, you know, they were, you know, turning things around. But, you know, they did very good draft wise, recruit uh not recruiting, but, you know, scouting and things like that. So that that just you know, it just always explains it, man. It, it, I, you know, it's it's tough to say because you know, sometimes quarterbacks do play bad games. And, you know, I played bad games before my career. Uh, you know, the great Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback ever to live, probably would tell you himself he played some bad games. Bad games is going to happen at the end of the day. You know, uh, you know, a lot of things ain't going to come on the Rodgers. Um, with his game, I saw a lot of things with that. You know, bad games is going to happen. That You know, in the reality of life, right, you're always going to have a bad day. Ain't no day going to be a great day. But the next, the point of thing is, is how do we come from a great day to have a better day the next time you come out, you know, have a better How do I wake up with a smile? At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So, you know, those bad days going to happen, but it's all about, like, how can I consistently keep being better and not, you know, you know, when the coach realized, you know, this player's not playing up the better. We're dealing with this injury. We're trying to stabilize this, man. How can we make our roster better? Especially at this point in the season, it's tough, right? It's all about trials and tribulations at this point. And we're all going to go through them. You know, moving on forward to it, and speaking of trials and tribulations, it's the Devontae Adams, you know, requested a trade from the Raiders. You know, it's it's tough to say where he ends up. And it's tough to say uh, what's his best fit. Obviously, his best fit is with, you know, you know a great quarterback. Um, Devontae Adams is has been consistently one of the best receivers in the NFL, um, without a doubt. But, you know, I, I, I think that relationship with the Jets is going to come to life. Um, and, you know, I think he brings a winning culture to a team, man. I think he's a guy that will build up the from my interactions with him and being around him. He's an uplifting father, uh, man, and teammate. I mean, I think he brings any team to a win. He's been in winning cultures before. He's kind of helped change this Raiders team around. Him and Max Crosby, I mean – I just think he's looking for, you know, a QB that can get him the ball. I think he's looking for OC that's emphasizing on their relationship. I mean, he's more than capable. It's just about can a game plan happen? Can he have those pieces around him for him to succeed? Um, and, you know, that's important. When you're in a position where um, someone's controlling how much success you have, it's very tough. It's very tough. I mean, you talk about linebackers, rushers, you kind of control your own success. I mean, yes, you need your teammates, you do that, but at the same time, sometimes you can put things into your own hands. 
And, you know, he's in a position where he can put the ball in his own hands. He just can't. So, um, it, you know, it's tough, man. But you always kind of say, I wish the best for Devontae and, you know, go from there. Let's talk about someone who's doing so much more than their team, just like how Nationwide is so much more than a great insurance company. They're a financial services company, too. We mentioned him last week with Slay, but I had to give him his actual fly- flowers. That's Boise State running back Ashton Gentry. I mean... He has rushed more than 1,000 yards in five games. This man is playing on rookie and real-life NCAA. I mean, he should be a 99 already in NCAA. Like, this is outrageous. I think he is the favorite for the Heisman. Even though Travis Hunter and Cam Ward, I think those two players, and we'll get into a little bit, those two players have been – these three players are the – I think have been the best players in college football besides Ryan Williams and uh, Smith from Ohio State. You talk about them five players – have been the most absolute lights out players. Um, when you talk about Heisman candidates, about who can actually win, those five players strike me the best so far uh, in college football. One, I mean, bro, I seen some of the runs. He's breaking like ten tackles to get into the end zone. Like this is outrageous stuff. Like. I'm not saying he can't do this in the NFL because, yes, I mean, he will go against some of the best linebackers in the world at this point. But what he's doing, this this feat, I think, I mean, I I think he has a chance to break major records, man. Major. I'm talking about records we ain't seen that can be touched, like, over 2,000. I mean, if a running back goes for over 2,000, you know, if he breaks these type of records, man, I don't, like, I feel like these are the records where, He's doing numbers where the running back used to get handed the ball 30 times a game. I mean, he's doing this off 12 to 15 carries. He's having 10.9 yards a carry. Like, this is outrageous. I mean, right now, he has 95 carries for 1,031 yards. Like, this is just outrageous. Like, man. Oh, man. Um, You know... People say he's not doing this in a Power 5 conference. I say regardless of conference, it doesn't matter. If you're doing this at a high level, especially Boise State, when so many great players came from there. I mean, Leighton Vanders, look what he was able to do in our in our league, and he came from Boise. I mean, it doesn't – Demarcus Lawrence came from Boise. Like, you're talking about great players that were successful in the NFL came from this place. Like – we can't just say, oh, it's Bo-. no, bro. That is Boise was once a powerhouse, bro. Like, please do not do this, bro. If you're if you're dominating at any level of college football, you're doing great for yourself. Like that is a like if you went to an HBC, Travis Hunter was at an HBCU, right? He was dominating HBCU. Y'all said the same thing. He went to Colorado. Now what's he doing? He's still doing it. Like that stuff does not matter, man. If you're if you're a dog at one place, if you're a dog, you're gonna be a dog no matter what. Period. Period. Like, that's just outrageous, bro. Um, Will he be a top 10? I think he can be. I think I, – now, I haven't purely broke down his film to give you his comp, but the way he's running, bro, at his, like, if he has, you know, Christian McCaffrey receiver skills or something like that, he could definitely be a Saquon, Christian McCaffrey type, especially with the way he's breaking tackles, how shifty he is and explosive, 100%. So – and then, you know, I want to give my clout, my flowers to Cam Ward. I seen back-to-back weeks where his poise, his determination, his relentless attitude of teammates and expecting more. I, I Mind you, I've never met Cam Ward a day in my life. Um, but from what I've seen on a football field, when you talk about a quarterback who I would want my team, it would be Cam Ward. I mean, early Virginia Tech came back. Now he's down 21 against Kyle and comes back. What does that say about how much his teams believe in Cam, right? The one's like, we know we got a guy. Well, now what does that say to Cam, how much he believes in his process, his teammates, right? That all matters, bro. When your quarterback is locked in like that, I mean, I think he's playing out high. If, bro, I mean, Cam Ward, I mean, I think he has a chance to be, you know, the first quarterback taken. When you look at what he's doing right now, I mean, doesn't care about the inter- – like, I could just tell it's next play, next play. Like, he truly got that dog mentality, can do it all. He's reading coverages. He's one of the ones. He's one of the ones. I mean, 
Whether they're down or up, I think he has the same rhythm. He has the same rhythm. I mean, it, it truly doesn't matter. But, you know, get into it. It's week six. Um, Cowboys versus Lions. Um, you know, you know, people probably wonder, am I going to be back? We're still getting better. I'm still day to day. I'm pushing. I'm working every day. Um, you know, I'm getting treatment six, seven days a week. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get back into the flow of things. Um, and we already know this is like a robbery. This is a robbery. Cowboys, Lions. Um, the Lions, obviously, went to the NFC Championship last year. They've been accomplishing so many great things so far. Um, and this is a special team, man. I mean, Dan Kim was definitely looking for his look back. You kind of saw his frustration. He, he even came out, he says, he has control for how the game played out last year. I mean... I think what makes them as a tough team is obviously obviously the great run game with Montgomery, uh, Jameer Gibbs, two, Thunder and Lightning. I mean, Thunder and Lightning. I think St. Brown is about explosive and shifty and as good as receiver as it could get. Uh, they got Jamal Williams with his explosiveness out there. I mean, they're a tough guy. You got Goff with his experience, and Goff from his situation in L.A. has been night and day on how good he's been in his career. I mean, it's been fresh scenery, fresh flowers for him, and he's took full advantage of it. I mean, this is a really good all-around team. And obviously, Aiden Hutchinson was playing that defensive player of the year level right now. He was NFC uh, defensive player of the month. I mean, you know, Cowboys definitely got their hands full, man. This is a great team. This is a great team. And uh, it's going to be a fun game. I, I don't never see how Cowboys Lions is not a fun game. I, you know, if I, you know, if I can play, I can't wait to play for it. Uh, but either way, man, this is going to be a great game. Battle two great teams. Um it is going to be so exciting. Um, and let's just take, you know, uh, some final questions from the chat. Did you see Max Crosby giving Bo Nix advice on the line? Speak up, Bo. Yeah, that's just who Max is. He's just that type of dog, man. He's always going to um, come with energy, excitement. That's just what he does. Uh, Jerry Jones helicopter landed on a turf field during practice last week. How often does it happen? Uh it usually ha doesn't happen before practice, during practice, but it usually does happen. Um, you know, he does ride his helicopter uh, quite often. But, you know, I want to thank, you know, Trayvon. I want to thank Nationwide. And obviously, I want to thank everyone who's tuning in for the show. It's always great. It's always amazing. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in to The Edge.